Happy Thursday. How you doing today, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you today about four categories of curses. Four main categories of curses. I am determined that you are going to live a curse-free life. And that is why we're talking about curses this week. And we'll see how long this goes. I know a lot of you have gotten rid of these already this week. Now I want the rest of you to get rid of it, to get rid of these curses. Because if you live a curse-free life, you will live the blessed life. And you cannot live a healthy, blessed life as long as curses are in your life. That's why I'm doing this. Amen? Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking about curses either. But it's so important to get rid of them. Once we get rid of these curses, then we can build our faith for the things of God. Amen? But you got to get rid of these curses. This is what Kenneth Copeland does. He lives a curse-free life. Creflo, T.D. Jakes, Jesse Duplantis, Keith Moore, those people, they live a curse-free life. Joe Olstein, Joyce Meyer, you know who they are. They live a curse-free life. And that's why they're so successful. And other people. That's why they're so successful. Amen. Say this with me today. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything works out for me. Say that every single day. Everything works out for me. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed at how things will just start to work out for you. That's what I always tell people now. I say, don't worry. Everything works out for you. Amen. Say, I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Ladies say, I am beautiful and getting more beautiful every day. Men say, I am young and handsome and getting better looking every day. That's me. How do I look? I had to fix myself up this morning. My entourage is not here yet. I'm not sure where they are. They're supposed to be here. I don't know where they are, these people. I have a wonderful entourage. Important people have entourages. I just don't know where mine is. Four categories of curses. How many of you know that these curses are awful, stinking, rotten things, and they get into your life, and they wreak havoc in your life, and they cause problems in your life? You can see this is my book, so I mark it up. I read this book all the time, just like I read all my books all the time. Category number one, curses of sin. Sin, which started in the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. Sin can get started. See, here's, here's the deal. Here's how sin works. It tells us in... Uh, 1 Corinthians, it says, if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. If we judge ourselves, if you do something wrong, uh, we're talking a major sin here. You do a major sin. Or if you get into a sinful lifestyle, God will give you a certain amount of time to get it straightened out and to repent. But if you don't, judgment eventually will come. And many times, judgment will come in the form of a curse. Now, God doesn't curse you because God doesn't curse anybody. But he will lift his protection and he will lift his blessing. And when he does, there is no voids. There's no voids. There is either the blessing or the curse is there all the time. If he lifts the blessing, the curse will come. Just like that's what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. When they sinned, 
God lifted the blessing and he said to Adam, cursed is the ground because of you. Well, cursed was the ground because of what Adam did and the devil came in and caused the curse. God took away the blessing. I don't want God to take away his blessing. Do you remember what David said in Psalm 51 after he had sinned? That, that Psalm 51 is a psalm of repentance. David said to God, he says, don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. See, kings had the Holy Spirit in those days. Now we all have the Holy Spirit. If God takes away the Holy Spirit, guess who's coming in? The devil's coming. Because there's no void. Right now, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit is inside you. You don't want that to be taken away. Amen? So I guard that. I guard that. Those are curses of sin. Now, the way to get rid of curses of sin is to repent, to turn your life around. Amen? If you're living like you're not supposed to be living and doing what you're not supposed to be doing, then change. It could be blocking your blessing. Amen? These are blessing blockers. Blessing blockers. Number two is the curse of the law. The curse of the law. And that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 64. And that is actually the curse of the law, word for word. Now, this is so important because you will see things in there. Let me just give you an example. This is the one I always use. You can see I spend time in Deuteronomy 28. The reason I do is because I don't want this in my life. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I know that. But the curse of the law has gotten back in the lives of people. It says, Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shall gather but little in. See, you sow a lot, and you gather a little. Now, a lot of people are tithing. And they've been tithing for years, and they call me and say, Pastor Jim, I've been tithing for years, and I'm still broke. It's not supposed to work that way. Well, it works that way because the curse of the law is in place. Amen. The curse of the law will keep you broke. It did me. Amen. Kept Kenneth Copeland broke too until he broke it. And it kept me broke for years and years and years because I did not know enough to break it. And I never had a preacher who knew enough about it to tell me to break it or help me to break it. But I found out on my own. It took me years to find out. And once I got onto it, then it took me eight more months. And finally, God is so wonderful, he had to speak to me and tell me. Because I didn't know. And I had nobody to tell me. And I guarantee you, you had nobody to tell you before I came along that the curse of the law needed to be broken. Because if it's not broken, you'll stay sick and you'll stay broke. And you think, people say, well, we're redeemed from the curse of the law, Pastor Jim. We can't be, we can't be cursed. Oh yeah, look around you. Look around. All these people, all these good, wonderful Christian people that are sick and broke. There was a pastor in a huge church uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma a few years ago, <clears throat> died of cancer. Why did he die of cancer? I'll tell you why he died of cancer. Because the curse of the law was still in his life. Amen. He was blessed in a lot of areas of his life. But his health, he was not blessed. The curse was still operating. And it killed him. Caused the, can the cancer. He could not get rid of the cancer because they didn't know enough to break the curse. They didn't know enough to break that curse. I did. Amen. History of heart disease and stuff in my family. Not with me. I broke that curse. Amen. Jesse Duplantis. All of his family died young. He didn't. Why? Because he broke the curse. And you can break the curse in your life too. This, and it says, And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropes in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Not prospering in your ways is part of the curse of the law. If you're not 
prospering, that curse is working. Now, it's, if, it's, if it's not being broke when we tell it to, to break, then there's something holding on to it. There's something holding on to it. Maybe you need to let it go. Sometimes people hang on to these things. They don't realize they're doing it. But they're hanging on to these things. Get rid of it. See, the ulti I can break it for you, but the ultimate authority in your life is you. Amen? We got to move on. Curses of disobedience, which are a failure to obey God's word. An example of curse of a disobedience is not tithing. That's a curse of disobedience. God said to bring all the tithes into the storehouse. He said there's a curse on your finances if you don't tithe. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 9, he said you are cursed with a curse. Why? Because you don't tithe. Amen? Tithing uh, does not break the curse itself, but tithing will keep the curse out once it's broke. Once a curse of, of your finances is broke, then uh, tithing will keep it out. Amen? But that, that curse of disobedience has to be broke. Amen? Glory to God. Number four, spoken curses. This is the, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, and you'll never amount to anything, and my kids are stupid, and, and you know, I get sick all the time, and we get the flu every year, and all, all those are curses. All those are curses. Once a curse gets into your life, we were talking about this last night, go to on Facebook and watch this. Once a curse gets into your life, it will stay forever until somebody with great faith in the name of Jesus breaks it. Now you got to be operating at a very high level of faith in the name of Jesus to break these things. This is what I do. For a lot of people, I break these curses because I want everybody to live a curse-free life. And I'm telling you what, people's, I get testimonies all the time from people going, oh my goodness, Pastor Jim, I never realized I could live like this before you broke the curses in my life. I People tell me that. Maybe you're one of them that told me that. Amen? I mean, women find husbands. The curse gets broken. There's a curse there of not be of no of not having a good relationship. I break these curses. It's all under the curse of the law. Once I break the curse of the law, everything opens up. Now, some of you people watching this video right now have experienced this. And you've experienced huge financial breakthroughs and just breakthroughs with your family and just Everything about your life is beginning to change. And the reason is because the curse is no longer there. Because if you're a partner with me, I will keep the curse out. Because every time you call me on Monday for the blessing or you call me on Friday, offering day to bless your offering, I'm going to break the curse in your life every time. Just in case it got back in there. Plus, I speak over our partners every morning. When I break the curse of the law and when I break the power of the devil, every morning I am keeping the devil and the curses out of the lives of me, our family, and all of our partners and everybody in our church. Amen. That's why people in our church are so successful and, and so blessed. And a lot of our partners are getting a hold of this. Then as your faith grows by watching these videos, I tell people this, watch the videos, watch your words, and watch what happens because you will increase. I'll do the rest. I'll keep, I'll keep the blessing in your life and I'll keep the curse out. You watch your words. Amen. Make sure you call me today if you need prayer. Make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and donations. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's a big help on our placements. Click the like button if you like this video. Amen. And please tell everybody you know about these videos because I want everybody to live a curse-free, blessed life.